Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, I'm on the test server. We're going to be testing out the current fusion. Who I'm actually thinking, the more I'm thinking about this dude, the more I think people are undervaluing him. I'm going to test out if it's if that's true or not in this video. So uh, we're going to be testing him against the hardest levels of Bommel. We're going to be testing him against the hardest levels of Finite Hard. We're going to be taking him for a run in Sintranos. Uh, against some high level like wave based content um, and yeah and I guess we're going to test his damage as well why not so Blizzard the Howler um, yeah I mean I'm in that same camp of saying feels like he's okay perhaps not the best champion we've ever seen but the more I'm looking at his kit the more I'm like well you know what does he just deal with some of the hardest bosses that people can't can't cope with so maybe he's more end game than he is early game don't know uh, we'll, we'll find out. Because A1's got a triple hit at random. This is particularly good, honestly, for Bommel. Potentially. Especially if you're doing auto Bommel. Because you might be able to get those freezes on the bombs. And the triple hit at random means that you've got a chance to just kind of like freeze up the bombs around you. Uh, yeah. So triple hit. It's okay. Obviously against Firenight, the more hits we get, the better. So that's good there as well. Especially for Firenight Hard, where the freezes got a chance to lower turn meter. So could be useful. The A2 has got increased defense and ally protection. This feels like a Hydra stroke clan boss type of ability. Can't unfortunately get the remove stun effect in clan boss lined up with your ally protection, which sucks a bit, honestly, because these should be on different skills to make this a clan boss champion. And well, in fairness, he just can't do the two things together. You have to have him at the back end of the turn order to do ally protection. And at the front end of the turn order to do uh, cleanse. So it doesn't really work for that. But I guess elsewhere, where are we, where are we going to be feared, true feared, maybe Hydra could be useful for that. Um, you know, and there's there's a bunch of places in wave based content where the rest of the things might happen. And obviously arena as well. The A3s and AOE freeze books to a four turn. It's okay. 100% um, freeze is great. 100% chance of dropping turn meter as well is okay. It's pretty cool. That means you've just got more time to get your, your damage away from your team. Uh, so it's, it's a good control-based ability. Not brilliant. What I've loved about what Raid have done recently, and they've not done it with this champion, is that when you've got champions where stuff just doesn't work against bosses, like freezes, more recently they've given it an alternative. Like, if, if you cannot apply freeze apply something else like a drop defense or you know so the trouble with this type of champion is he just doesn't work against bosses which really turns people off like against clan boss this does nothing this does nothing so literally this is all you've got and i'm not saying this is bad because actually for entry level clan boss it's great but yeah i really loved it when they were doing other stuff with these heroes that just don't do anything in on boss content which is really what people enjoy the most in this game anyway Got a passive here, so whenever an enemy tries to freeze him, he throws it back at the enemy. That's pretty cool as well. Uh, I guess, are we going to have Soraf in this rotation of Doom Tower? I don't think that we do. Obviously, we won't freeze someone like a Soraf, but it might mean that he doesn't get frozen and therefore can remove the freeze from your team, which is quite cool as well. And we've got here, whenever this champion is killed, revives them with 30% HP and turn meter and then puts revive on death on them as well. So we're going to do a bit of testing around Bommel with this. Is this going to be some sort of new mechanic which is going to help us? So uh, this is going to be bizarre. I think, I think he's going to be solid if you pick him up, but not a massive game changer. But we'll see. This video, we can, we can kind of test some stuff. Now, I do have a bunch of soul stones on my main account. What happens on a test server is they transfer across everything you've got. Okay, so none of this is going to stay on my main account. But I'm really hoping that I can pull Blizzard Soul. It, it makes a big difference having even a level one brimstone on him, honestly. Also looking for souls from the, some of these other ones for other vid, uh, videos that I want to do as well. So let's just pull some soul stones quick. I'm just going to span through it and hope that we see Blizzard. But we know what soul stones are like, and we know what the wish list stroke crap list is like as well. So um, just whiz through. What's the chances of seeing gold? Very low. I'm just, just a one star is what I'd love, honestly. One star. Give me a one star brimstone. I'd be happy with that. Is that 
massively speeds up anything you're trying to do. Right? For those watching this video that are perhaps a bit newer, if you're picking up your first fusion and it's, oh, sorry, if you're picking up any legendary, then Brimstone makes a massive difference to your account. Okay. When you get multiple heroes, you then start to be a bit more selective around what blessings you take. But early on, Brimstone is where it's at. Plan boss damage, boss damage, any of that stuff. Looks like though I'm going to have no luck here. One more of the medium ones. I'm kind of ignoring even what they are because I know that they're all totally irrelevant to me. I'm going to do two big boy ones. What's, the luck? What's your luck? What's your luck? What we got here? I wouldn't mind that on the main account. Six star Ugo. We got gold. We got a six star. Whatever. Anyway, okay, so that's that's useless to me. That's useless, right. So we're going to start by taking a look at him on the hardest level of Bommel. This is where I feel like if anyone's struggling with content and he might be able to bring some support, this is where it is. This, for me, is, is going to be the spot. So I built him like I would build a Samar gem cursed. Yeah, so Samar has got the ability to solo Bommel, uh, similar to any solo Bommel build I would do, honestly. So it's Regen set with Immortal Gear, uh, over 250 speed. I've pushed high health and good defense. He's got a very high base defense and a good base health anyway. So anything scaling with that is going to work well. I have built enough accuracy to land his, his um, freezes. So over 350 is where you want to be for that. I've not built him with any sort of damage. So his damage is going to come through any Warmaster procs. Obviously, if I could put Brimstone on him, I would do that. And then basically what we've done is we've just kind of pumped health, made sure I've got some accuracy, pumped some defense and some HP, uh, and then obviously speed wherever I can. So I've still got room for glyphage, but I didn't want to go too insane. Um, and yeah, we're going to try them out. In terms of masteries here, I've got War Master so that we actually get some damage away. Otherwise, like where's the damage coming from, honestly? Uh, we do have things like Spirit Haste so that when our team die, he gets more speed. Uh, maybe I should have done <clears throat> Arcane Celerity for a bit more speed as well, thinking on it. Might have been better. Uh, I've taken Whirlwind of Death, so if he kills people in the waves, he gets some more speed. And then we've got War Master for our damage. That's pretty much the main masteries that I'm looking at. Now, I was thinking about something like this. So I've got a speed aura from just a, a, a someone who's done a die. I've bought Newt in. Not, he, he's not needed, honestly, but... All I'm thinking is open with a blessed bash and hopefully uh, hopefully he's dead before he gets a chance to try and push turn meter back. But yeah, open with a blessed bash to just get a load of the health gone. We'll see if, th if this is going to help us. I've got Wukong in here mainly because I would like him to, um, to land Brimstone. Yeah, so I, I did this kind of strat. Thing is, I did this strat with, what's his name? The big blue... Big blue dude, the solo dude. I, I can't remember his name. I, my brain has literally gone to mush on names. This guy, Buren Geary. Buren Geary. I did this strat with Buren Geary where actually Wukong dying gives him more healing. So this is not going to be the case with Blizzard. So it might be that this doesn't work. I guess we'll try it first. I will say though, Blizzard is the right affinity for Bommel, which is great. So it doesn't mean that we've got a chance. I've turned off on the boss. The A2 and the A3 for Blizzard. The A3, unfortunately, although it's an AoE freeze, which is good for the bombs, it also drops turn meter, which we don't want. We don't want any turn meter mechanics at all because that's just going to force more bombs. But the A1 doing random hits, I think, might be enough to keep the bombs frozen and therefore, uh, you know, in, in good shape, honestly. It means that we, we should be able to get the bombs frozen, which means they'll do less damage to us. And obviously, it will also, um, he's also got this revive ability, right? The big hit here to start off with, which is good. One of the bombs is frozen right now. So he's just a one in. A1, your life away, my friend. Double freeze, which is good. He's healing through his uh, immortal and regen. And then he's got the ability to, to bring himself back to life. It's tight already. Thinking Wukong's actually not helping us here. Hold on. Wukong in this situation is not good. Although I would love his brimstone damage. 
Um, he's causing us more problems than not because we're getting stunned up as well. So let's just throw someone else in. This is level 90, don't forget. So the other thing to bear in mind is we, we can bring it down a notch. Like if, you know, this is obviously the hardest level of Bommel. If we can't beat the hardest level, then it's still worth checking out like level 50 because that will, that will basically show to us whether he's going to be helped for us in places like the Cursed City, Sintranos. Because most people are struggling at the moment from what I'm seeing with the Bommel levels. Same with my free-to-play that I, I tried a video yesterday. And um, yeah, my free-to-play struggled alongside it, obviously. I don't really want to have to push more stats than what I've got because already the gear I've got on him is decent. Two ads being dead here is good. Which means I've got less for uh, Bommel to kind of like stun up. Okay. So on to the boss. Get a triple hit away. It's about all he's good for. Apart from, yeah, I guess, yeah, adding an extra layer of freeze. Good job, Newt. This is what I don't want, though. These, these bombs ticking away are actually a bit of a problem. So here we go. We're basically now 1v, 1v3. And I guess there's a bunch of RNG involved as to whether you get your freeze away or not. So we've had the revive on death. Freezes are coming in nice. I don't think it's going to be quick because we've got very small like mechanics to actually get damage away, especially having no brimstone. So we've had the revive on death there. This is like our danger moment, I guess. We need enough turns to get... It's why he needs to be fast. We need enough turns for him to get that passive back before he dies again. So the difference, I guess, between him and Samar, yeah, is that he doesn't heal that much. Like the 30% heal is not massive on his passive. You could kind of see there, we're not still quite far away. We're quite far away. Can I do anything to alter this? So I've had a bit of a brainwave here. I'm thinking I was building my Blizzard to deal with Bommel. Yeah, so I'm up against Bommel. That makes sense, right? I've come to hellhades.com, hover on Raid Shadow Legends, down to the Raid Stages tool, and I've just gone into Doom Tower, Rotation 3, which is where Bommel lives, hard 90. There's actually any content in the game that you can find in here to find what stats you need, by the way. Um, and what I was realizing is I was building enough accuracy to beat Bommel, Bommel's resistance, but I don't need that. I need enough accuracy to freeze the bombs, which actually means I can bring my accuracy down by like 100 and still get a good proc rate on freezing bombs. So that's cool. Means I can change my build up a bit uh, to make him freeze the bombs. That's what I care about. So yeah, so what I've done is I've taken his banner off, which was accuracy before, and I put HP on it now. I've also changed his gloves into HP gloves instead of defense gloves, because I felt like his defense number was stacking quite high versus what I really needed, which was more HP. So the build is hard. Like I will say, like this is not an easy build. 269 speed, high health, high defense, and then over like 230 accuracy is what I've gone for. I've also changed up his masteries here, uh, and I'm going to be running in with Wukong. So I'm thinking Wukong is my damage, and Blizzard keeps the run alive. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm grabbing some more turn meter when debuffs drop off, i.e. when bombs pop. I'm grabbing extra healing from my sets. I'm grabbing timely intervention which is giving me more turn meter when my ally drops below 25%. Wukong's dropping below 25% all the time. So I'm getting way more turns, which means that I heal a lot more. That's what I'm thinking. Uh, we then build out defensive masteries. I've got no war master anymore. I've got defensive masteries, just trying to stay alive. More turn meter if Wukong gets crit. And the idea here is Blizzard has tons of turns, which gives me more chance to get back to my passive. Wukong does all of the damage through landing Brimstone and basically they duo it. Let's give it a go.
<clears throat> I didn't know if that was going to work or not, honestly, but it did. You can probably see if I had a, a brimstone on Blizzard here, then that would be way faster and way more consistent. But Sun Wukong plus Blizzard against Bommel 90 hard is possible. Now, I'm not saying it's easy because the build I've got on Blizzard here is high. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a high level build. It's a lot of stats, but he, he will help people that can't do it. I don't know if without Wukong, if that works the same, because I've I had to take defensive masteries to be able to make that work. But it does make it work if you've got Wukong, which most of us should have because he was a freebie just recently. The other thing is if I didn't have Wukong, but I had Brimstone, I think that works as well. But I can't test that because I don't have it right now on the test server. But definitely, um, it's definitely possible. And that's that's the main thing is like, is he going to help people with probably the hardest boss in the game? Or at least maybe the two hardest bosses in the game, I think he does. So I'm just thinking, strip it back a layer here and just go with way, well, basically strip all my accessories off and have a quick try of Sintranos with the same type of build. Because a lot of people are struggling with, you know, the first Bommel boss here. There's also, I know I struggled with this on my free to play. Where is there a duo boss with Bommel as well? Pretty sure I fought a duo boss with Bommel quite early on. Maybe I'm going crazy. Was it up here? Here you go. Yeah, so you've got Bommel and uh, Ice Golem in Dead Rise. Is there any more Bommel encounters? There's no more Bommel encounters, I think. But there is a hard finite encounter. So this type of freeze mechanic or yeah, the ability to drop turn meter with freeze or try and deal with Bommel is actually going to come up a, quite a few times in Sintranos. So why can I not? This is annoying now. Why do we not have AI setups in Sintranos? The other question is, can I even use him? I can't use him. Can I? No, hold on. Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Hold on. Where is he? Oh, support or attack type. Wow. Okay. No, he's not available. He's not helping us with Bommel. Uh, this stage. That's actually annoying. Let me just check this one. Spirit Affinity. No Ogryn tribes there. So he's not helping us. Oh, man. Rage, you've let yourself down here. You have let yourself down. Force Affinity. No Ogryn tribes. So anywhere where we might have wanted this fusion in Sintranos, uh, he's not available. That actually sucks. You've let yourself down, Raid, because that would have... Uh, push people, push more people to do this fusion. That's actually terrible, terrible thinking from the raid team there. Right, now we're changing it up to a Fire Knight hard build, um, which obviously is going to be, or is, the toughest content in the game. Yeah, and, you know, doing a check, he's actually not helping us in Sintranos at all because they've actually, they've, they've made none of the levels relevant to Blizzard for Sintranos that we want. All the Bommel levels don't have Ogryn tribes in it, or they don't have spirit Ogryn tribes. I've had a look. Basically, nothing on this rotation is going to help us. So that sucks a lot, honestly. But anyway, I've gone Relentless Gear with some Perception. We pushed 100% crit rate, high defense, high accuracy, and uh, we've got Warmaster in the build. So what I've done is for now, first, first look, stage 10. I've just removed my Creodan, who's who I normally run in my finite team, and put Blizzard in the same spot. He's basically an upgraded Creodan, in my opinion, for this sort of fight. He's given us AoE control for the waves, which is great. He's given us increased defense, actually, for someone like Nut, who is going to hit harder. And then on the boss, all we're going to do is A1 and hopefully get some turn meter drops. But it is... It's not like a newt 100% chance to drop. It's a 50%. Massively different. But um, anyway, let's just go through the setup of everyone else. I've got two ally attackers, Longbeard and Lona for real. Basically, when we get to the boss, we need their ally attack available. We run in with your Yakal and get a double hit away. And we've also got uh, decreased speed on his A2. So your Yakal's really good for this fight. Newt's bringing us the A1 with all the turn meter drop, as well as the Blessed Bash for some actual damage. And then it's just like multiple hits into the shield. Hopefully, we get this guy dead. Fire Knight, stage 10. My team is not a 100% team, annoyingly. 
But even with these stats, it's not a 100% team. If I get some bad RNG, and this is where Newt versus Blizzard makes quite a big difference. So if I had a second Newt with the 100% chance of dropping turn meter on that A1, I could make it 100%, right? But because Blizzard or Triadan in his place has got a smaller chance, like a 50 50 as to whether he's going to drop turn meter, sometimes I could not drop the turn meters, um, the boss's turn meter right the way back. But that AoE control there is actually massive for the waves. And that's going to be the same whether you're on hard Doom Tower, hard Finite, anywhere in the game, that AoE control is going to help you uh, get through waves of enemies. So that is actually quite a positive point for him here. And when we get to the boss, we're going to need our ally attacks to start pushing back turn meter. So 21 stacks of shield is massive on this boss. We go ally attack, drop a bunch of turn meter. I've got Newt and Blizzard at the back of the group. Ally attack now. So Newt and Bazaar should be dropping turn meter. See that? We've got a stack back. And then drop turn meter again from Newt. Should get decreased speed here from the car, which landed. Drop turn meter again from Blizzard. And then Newt starts taking over. And we get our blessed bash away. And at this point, you're just hoping that we get enough turn meter drop in between the groups with the RNG. Now, I'd say for me, this might be like a 90% run. It's all about that early part of the fight because at this stage, we're now well in control. Yeah, and there's, I would say there's almost no chance that I can't keep this under control now. Because Blizzard just dropping that turn meter back one or two every time. And we're really just looking now for the blessed bash from Newt to get the job done again. Without Newt in the team, I still think it's incredibly difficult to do finite hard, like the highest level. I could probably do it. If this was Creedan instead of Newt, I could probably do maybe stage six. But it would be slow and you know almost un unplayable, unplayably slow. But you can see here he does a job. So on the two hardest bosses in the game, he does a job, and a pretty solid one, honestly. You know, a pretty solid one. He can be used in clan boss as well, and that's going to be decent for an early game player. But this is for late game players is actually probably a, you know, a slightly better area for him to be involved in. So you guys thought I'd forgot? No way! We're doing maximum damage with Blizzard, the Howler as well, just to see if he does actually smack. Uh, so we built him in Savage and Cruel Gear. We've given him 6.8k, nearly 6.9k defense, 247% crit damage. He's got Helm Smasher on, and we're building him out with an increased defense champion dropping the defense and weakening enemies and two champions to buff our damage. Let's see what he's all about. He's only got two abilities really to test here. And let's not forget, like, you know, we're, we're looking for really for someone to smack hard on this sort of level. We want to be seeing at least 300k, I'd say. Let's slow it down. 300k would be big, considering this is also a control ability. A3. Oh, like 295. Not bad, actually. Not bad. It's like solid damage, not crazy damage, I would say. Let's see what his A1 does. His A2 doesn't hit, so that would just be buffing your team. Let's just see what the A1's got going on. Not a lot. <laughs> not a lot. His A3 hits kind of hard. You're not going to build him for damage anyway, but there you go. Lizard does do a bit of work. Anyway, that's going to do it for this video. He helps you on two of the hardest bosses in the game. He hits kind of hard, and he's going to be good for crowd control generally. If you're an early game player or mid game player, he might do some work for you in clan boss as your ally protector. Outside of that, he's not really doing too much else on bosses. But hey, two of the hardest bosses in the game, not that bad, really. Anyway, ho, ho, ho. I'll see you later. <laughs>